Okay, Sonic Heroes is a pretty good game. You know that, I know that. But every single game has good levels and bad levels. So today, we're gonna go ahead and rank every single level in Sonic Heroes right here on the ranking zone. That's what the show's called. To get started, this will only be ranking the Team Sonic experience, and this is because Team Dark is just Team Sonic with more enemies, Team Rogue is just Team Sonic with the levels cut in half, and Team Chaotix, while the most unique of the bunch, doesn't have any levels that are any more fun than just Team Sonic's get to the end missions. Uh, usually you'll just be collecting hermit crabs, or defeating all the enemies, or collecting enough rings. This is a gameplay style that will later be expanded upon in the hit video game Shadow the Hedgehog released in 2005 for the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and do this tier list in sequential order. So we're gonna start off with Seaside Hill. Seaside Hill is one of the best opening stages in Sonic history, at least aesthetically. There's a reason this level is used in almost every Sonic spinoff since Heroes. Other than the copyright troubles with Green Hill's music. This level is basically if you took Green Hill Zone, brought it to 3D, and put it on a beach. The beach part is really what separates Seaside Hill from Green Hill, obviously, as well as the red and white ruins, which contrast nicely with both the ocean and the grass. The music is great and fits the level really well while still sounding like usual Sonic Adventure era music. It's good. Gameplay-wise, it's a pretty solid introductory level. Stage utilizes all three teams pretty well, and teaches you most of the mechanics in the game in a nice, non-threatening environment. Honestly, the only real negative with the stage is that, compared to others, there really isn't a climax. There's not really a lot of hype moments in the level. Uh, it just teaches you how to use the Team Blast at the very end, which is cool for new players, but it doesn't exactly wow anyone who figured it out earlier in the level by, you know, looking at the little bar up top, or anyone who has played the game before. Uh, overall, this is a very fun stage, but I wouldn't say it's one of the best stages. It's iconic because of the fact that it looks like Green Hill, uh, but, you know, Green Hill already exists. At least if you're going to copy from something, you're copying from the best. Ocean Palace is just a better seaside hill. Like, seriously. I'm pretty sure when people think about Seaside Hill, they're actually thinking about this stage. Yeah, there's no real references to Green Hill anymore, but that's a good thing, as it allows the level to be its own thing. And, since this isn't the very first level, technically, they're allowed to put you in scenarios that force you to switch formations more often, which makes the level feel incredibly fluid. Out of the three formations, Power Formation really gets a chance to shine here. In Seaside Hill, there's just a few rocks to break, nothing special, but here there's plenty of doors and ruins that require knuckles to break through, as well as fans that introduce you to the triangle dive. There's also this really cool turtle section where you can choose which direction you want to go based on formation. It's one of the most open parts of the whole game, and the amount of freedom feels great. Also, unlike Seaside Hill where you just press the Z button and the level's over, Ocean Palace has a whole section where you're being chased by giant... They say rocks, but they're clearly wheels. Not sure why they needed giant wheels in these ancient ruins, but it's cool. And it's deserving of our first S rank. Also, this stage is one of the best music tracks in the whole game, it's so good, oh my god! Egg Hawk is a boring fight that's very tedious until it's very easy. Basically, you just chase the Egg Hawk to an open beach where you just punch it until it dies. The problem is that you have to keep up with the boss, but not go too fast. Otherwise, they'll just skip the landing part, which is where you do all the damage. Uh, bosses in Sonic Heroes in general are based off of speed only, so as long as you beat them quickly, uh, you can just flounder around, and then you'll end up still getting an A rank. Uh, it's a good thing that they're not based off of the rings and stuff too, because a lot of the bosses just have a bunch of enemies laying around that just spray bullets everywhere, and uh, yeah, you'll imagine that you just get hit by random stuff all the time. You could focus on killing the enemies, but unfortunately, that will just lower your time, so it's just not really, it's not really worth it. Also, camera bad. E2. No way! I can't believe this! Grand Metropolis is another great stage with a great aesthetic and equally great music. The energy-powered paths really bring this stage to life and make it feel futuristic, and thanks to them, the level doesn't have much downtime. The stage introduces the light speed dash, grinding, and the blue tornado, and as such, it's a much more speed-focused level compared to the other levels. With that said, both the light speed dash and the rails are unreliable, despite this level doing its best to convince you otherwise. Similar to Seaside Hill, there isn't really a climax to the level, but everything in it is so good it can't be lower than an A rank, so that's where it goes. Power Plant keeps the aesthetics of the previous stage, but unfortunately doesn't expand upon them at all. The stage has quite a few roadblocks where you have to destroy enemies to progress, and they all look pretty much identical. Also, there's two elevators. I don't know why they did that. Not to mention, firewalls aren't exactly fun to deal with on the paths that make you move forward automatically, so they basically require you to use flight formation on the off chance that you need to take a hit, since the power character will usually take the hit for you. The ending segment is also stressful, proving that a climax isn't always the best. This section would be better if they weren't for the roadblocks from earlier in the level. Yeah, I made it through without issues, but I'm a Sonic Master, so of course I did. 
There's also this glitch part that I assume is only in the PC version where I wouldn't be launched by the spring to the next area and I just had to hope that I made it with the previous momentum that I had. I'm not judging the level itself for that, but I just thought I'd mention it. The stage does have multiple paths, and the music is great as usual, but all of the previous issues hold it back from being one of the great levels in the game. It's definitely not the worst the game has to offer though, so it's still just a B. It's fine. Also, Power Plant has to be one of the most boring names of all time. I don't know why they chose this name for this level, it's pretty freaking boring. The Team Rose battle is a battle that requires a lot of thought and technique in order to pull off. Honestly, I'm not sure how most people could get past this boss without looking it up, because the amount of mental fortitude required to beat this challenging gauntlet is difficult for the average player to ever achieve in their lifetime. And even if you did figure out the gimmick of the boss, the amount of dexterity required to beat them rivals playing competitive Super Smash Bros. Melee. You better start some hand exercises if you want to get through this part of the game, otherwise I don't know what to tell you. Truly, this boss is a marvel of game design and the highlight of this entire game. Casino Park has fantastic visuals and amazing music. Seriously, it cannot be understated how much I love the music to the stage. With that said, everything else about this level is not great. Mandatory pinball isn't great. The pinball controls themselves aren't great. And at least to a level that really isn't that great. The music and visuals are so good though, they easily carry this level to C tier. Without them, this level would be way lower. Bingo Highway keeps the fantastic visuals and has another amazing song. Like before, the pinball controls are bad, but this time you aren't trying to go up, you're going down. This one change makes the pinball sections way more enjoyable, but what really seals the deal for this level being better than the previous one is... BINGO! Seriously, the bingo chips do a fantastic job leading the player down the boards while simultaneously rewarding players who can reach them. With that said, the final section of this level has a ton of bottomless pits, which is pretty cheap. Your teammates can and will fall into these holes, making this section incredibly tedious unless you do a workaround. Just switch the power formation and stand in a way that only one of your teammates goes into the tube, then switch to them. The other teammates won't follow, so if you fall off, you can just try again. This stage is a pretty major improvement over the last one, but it's still pinball, so B tier. Also, the walls say Ice Cube for some reason, so that's neat. If you thought the last boss was good, then oh boy won't this one be a treat. You ever want to just battle a bunch of enemies in a circle for three minutes? No? What? You're saying that that's a boring concept for a boss and not even challenging at all? That's crazy! Don't get too excited, boys! Those were the easy ones! Okay, Rail Canyon. Yeah. Rails and Sonic Heroes aren't all that fun due to their finicky nature. They were fine in Grand Metropolis, but here they're, uh, not nearly as good. Sometimes you just miss the rails when you try to jump on them, sometimes switching rails glitches out and you just get flown to the side, sometimes hitting a dash panel before you land on a rail will blast you off to your death. Overall, it's just not a very fun experience, especially when you have a whole level based around this really finicky mechanic. Also, there's a part of the end that you can just outrun the trains and you can just run into them and then they just kill you, because that's fun. There is an easy way to land on the rails, and that would be just to not touch a single button when you blast it off of a spring, because that will guarantee that you land right on them. They've kind of programmed it that way. So if you press buttons, then you die. So it's kind of like encouraging you not to play the game. It's not very fun. This level's probably my least favorite level in the whole game as far as the main non-boss stages go. It's, it's a D, man. Aesthetic's fine, but I mean, when you compare it to every other level in the game, it is just a canyon. Uh, the sunset, uh, it's either sunrise or sunset. They say you have until sunset, so I'm assuming it's a sunrise, but it makes some sense for it to be sunset. Regardless, it's not nearly as interesting as anything else in the whole game, so even if it is kind of cool, it's still just fine. The level stuff doesn't make up for how finicky and unfun the level is. D. Both station is what Rail Canyon wishes it could be. The music is better and the theme is more realized, being a base rather than just floating rails in a canyon. Speaking of rails, they do take more of a back seat in this level compared to this predecessor, but they're still more abundant on average, and rails are bad. So although this is an improvement from Rail Canyon, it still isn't the best. The tunnel sections where you blow up the trains are fun, and a way better use of the aesthetic than just having to be obstacles on a track. The cannon sections are fun too, even if they don't really require any input from the player. However, my biggest gripe with this level has to be the bobsled. This is the first time you've seen the bobsleds in Seaside Hill, and now, it takes damage. This mechanic, to be blunt, sucks. I don't understand why they wouldn't just make you lose rings. On top of that, if the bobsled is destroyed, you just outright lose a life. Bobsled isn't ever required. Look, you can just very clearly walk when you die, so I don't see why they couldn't just penalize you by not giving you a level up when it's destroyed. Bobsled honestly brings down both of the stages it's in after Seaside Hill. This one gets a C.
The egg albatross is just if you took the egg hawk and put it on a blimp, which means it's still not great. The part where you punch it to death with a bad camera angle is gone, but it's still an incredibly easy boss. The best strategy is to ignore the boss first and get some a couple of level ups on the left path, and then just spam a homing attack until each part of the boss is destroyed. The homing attack is unreliable, so your best bet is to attack the wings in the first phase, not the body. Alternatively, you can just take the right path and get level ups for tails. Doing this will also get you your team blast before the first phase, so you can take out the first phase without having to risk homing attack into your death. Also be aware that the game likes to time the wings cannon shots just so that they shoot right when you feel like it's the best time to jump. Just switch to Sonic, run up close, switch to Tails, spam thunder shoot. It's slower, but it's safer. Plus it's funny to take out the third phase in one shot. The fact that I have more than a couple of sentences to say about this box makes it better than anything else we've seen so far, but it's still bad. E tier. Honestly, I don't know how much to say about Frog Force because it's just fun. The stage does amazing music, amazing visuals, and an amazing gimmick. After dealing with pinball and rails, having the gimmick be find a big frog to create path is just fantastic. The propeller flower is introduced here, there's a big mushroom, there are vines you can grind on. Although they are rails, you can just employ the don't touch anything strategy, and this level doesn't really ask too much of you with them, so they're fine. This stage is just a breath of fresh air. With all of the gimmicks melting perfectly with the aesthetic, without being obtrusive, this is absolutely one of the best stages in the game. S tier. Lost Jungle continues the same amazing visuals from the last level. The music is probably the most ambient in the game, but it still fits the level nicely. The gimmick in this stage builds upon the previous one, removing paths instead of creating them. However, the black frogs are never really utilized in a way that requires you to avoid them, which is a shame because they'd be a great way to add some alternate paths. Regardless, I appreciate that they expanded on the idea of Big Frog. Video games could always use more Big Frog. The alligator at the end of the level can be pretty difficult if you haven't gotten the timing of the vine swinging down, but it's still pretty cool and manageable with practice. Also, Omega says this line, so you know it's a good stage. Beaten by fruits, how weak they must be. A tier. This boss is basically identical to the previous team battle and can be beaten just as quickly, but at least in the PC version, it seems to happen way less often. It seems like you'll always knock off Rouge pretty quickly, but you just have to spam attacks and hope you knock off Omega, and then eventually you might get lucky enough to knock off Shadow. However, about 40 seconds into the fight, they'll use their Team Blast to bring everybody back, so if you didn't beat him before 40 seconds, then you're out of luck for a little bit. Team Dark's Team Blast also stops time for a bit, it's Chaos Control, but the AI doesn't ever really capitalize on it, so it's fine. I played this fight for literal hours, and I couldn't tell you the best strategy for going fast in it, except for to switch to Tails and spam Thunder Shoot right at the start. If you're lucky, you'll hit Rouge in a way that the other two are still holding onto her while she falls to her death, and it'll be over in literally 10 seconds or less. The fact that I have more to talk about than just a joke proves that they're you know better than team rose still eat here though what's wrong with me welcome to hang castle aka the best spooky level in any sonic game this level has amazing music much like the whole game does and having it changed with the main gimmick of the level flipping the castle is a very nice touch this level feels like it utilizes each team member equally which is great because sonic heroes is at its best when you're constantly switching formations these invisible torch paths are really cool I really like the part near the end of the stage where you're climbing the tower upside down. It's neat because normally, you know, you climb the other way. Oh, and hey, look at this very subtle hit for the final boss in case you missed the opening. Also, for once, the first stage has an actual climax. Running down the castle is a great way to end the level, even if it does throw you into the only auto running section in the whole game. This level is my personal favorite, and similar to Frog Forest, the gimmick only enhances the stage rather than detracting from it like pinball or rails. S tier. Mystic Mansion has my favorite music track in the whole game. If we were just judging the stage on aesthetic, I would say that this was my absolute favorite. Probably one of my favorite Sonic levels in the whole franchise. However, this level has a lot of problems. First of all, there's a bobsled section. Now, I know that the previous one annoyed me, but this one is actually frustrating. I can do it pretty easily after years of determination, but the characters don't even say jump until after the danger has passed. How's that even helpful? And with the aforementioned damage system, you can see how this can be incredibly frustrating. There are rail sections in the level that are spiderwebs, which look cool, but basically you just need to be in flight formation like with every other rail because you kind of are required to switch rails and it's easier just to jump and fly to the right rail. There's a part near the end of the level where you're riding on one of these anvils and a ghost just pops up on it and hits you. It hit me twice and I knew it was there the second time. The first time it caught me completely off guard. It was incredibly cheap and it just felt awful. And then right after this you go into a well where there's a whole bunch of other ghosts everywhere and it seems like... It seems like this was just made to make you lose your rings, and it doesn't feel very fun. But saving the worst part of the level for last, because this level saves the worst part of the level for last. 
there's this ending section which is a pretty neat idea. You have to use a gimmick from each character, kind of like a three trial scenario. In fly formation and in power formation, this isn't a big deal. This is fine, because their gimmicks work. But in speed formation, you're going to have to homing attack across a path of ghosts. The homing attack in this game already isn't all that reliable, but this is the first time that it really, really affects you and actually hinders your progress. Sometimes Sonic will just realize the ghosts aren't real and won't target them. Sometimes the ghosts themselves will realize they aren't real and disappear from existence right before your eyes. Sometimes he just, uh, just misses. It's just how it goes. If the homing attack was more reliable, I could see this working really well, and if the ghost didn't just decide to randomly disappear, I could see this working fine. But unfortunately, both of those things happen, and as such, this is the worst. You could have a perfect run, and then Sonic just decides he doesn't want to attack anything anymore, and then you die. It's uh, pretty awful. I want to give this level an A or an S rank, because there are sections of it that are really, really fun. But my gut is really telling me to put this into C. But that said, my girlfriend told me a spooky level isn't allowed to be any lower than B tier, so I guess I gotta put it in the bottom of B. Them's the brakes. This is just Robot Carnival with more enemies and somehow even less creativity. E tier. Worse than the game. What did you say? Now I'm really mad! Hey, so do you remember what I said about Rail Canyon? You know, how making an entire level about rails is bad and it makes a really bad level? Uh, how about they just do that again? Except this level's amazing. Despite Eggfleet being covered in rails, the sprites are not as obnoxious as they may think. The urban segment is the most complex rail section in the entire game, and unlike Rail Cannon, they actually lead to alternate areas, which is good. Yeah, the rails are as finicky as I stated earlier, but as long as you don't touch the controller when you're being launched towards the rails, you should be fine. The propeller flower from Frog Forest is back here, and it's used pretty well as a way to go from ship to ship. Landing on a battleship in particular feels really great, with all the cannons locked on you and the door slamming in your way. The music amps this up even further to give you a good sense that this is the final area. You're here to break things and reach Eggman. In fact, the only negative I can give is related to breaking down the ships. Uh, the, the Rocket XL is kind of picky about when it goes off, so it makes the sections where you have to destroy the ships feel a bit more gimmicky than they need to. Overall, this level is still fantastic though. Uh, I have no problems with it. It's really good. So it's going to get S here. Also, was that Iron Man? Final Fortress is very good at what it needs to do. If I were to describe Egg Fleet as an over-the-top action scene, I would describe Final Fortress as the moment of build-up before the climax. It doesn't have any hype moments, but it does set the mood and build tension. The level is called Final Fortress, clearly something big is going to happen at the end. Uh, but two major things to note. Uh, first is multiple areas with heavy egg hammers that would require a lot of waiting and take up a lot of your time, but usually the game gives you a team blast before these moments, or they're spaced out far enough that you just earn a team blast on your own. Also remember that Sonic can just do a second team blast afterwards if you homing attack or if you get launched by one of the other characters. Second, the final section is a rail section that requires jumping from rail to rail. Uh, this is fine if you remember that, you know, flight is the best option. Uh, it actually is okay in the other forms too, because the rails are pretty evenly spaced and evenly set up. But there is this final section at the end that you assume that you could get through by going faster, but turns out you can't. You just gotta switch to flight and then fly. So yeah, turns out I was right and flight is actually the best option for rails. Uh, anyway, this is a very solid level. Uh, it doesn't have any glaring flaws, but like I said, it's just a level of kind of build up. It's a solid ending, so uh, A tier. I have no other options. Yeah! Well, at least it's not Egg Albatross attached to another ship. Egg Emperor's design is actually pretty cool. Considering the enemies are called Egg Pawns, Egg Knights, Egg Wizards, Egg Bishops, Egg Flappers, it makes sense that Eggman himself is basically the Egg King. The goal in this fight is to chase Eggman into an open area with a bunch of enemies and mash a button until he's dead. Yeah, did I mention that the boss and the Sonic Heroes aren't all that great? At least the chase area has more to talk about than the Egg Hawk. Eggman will launch blade beams at you that alternate between vertical and horizontal. Uh, once this is done, he'll either shoot rockets if you're close, or if you're far enough away, he'll charge at you. This move is unavoidable, so go ahead and try to stay a little bit close. Getting too close is a bit annoying though, because you'll have to wait for him to get far enough back before taking any dash panels or launching anywhere, because you'll just run into him and die. Speaking of, you're going to want to wait a little bit and use the power flipper here and not the dash panels when you're going to go into this area. The game gives you a level up for all three of the characters right at the beginning, but going through the flipper gives you a level two, which gives him his level two of the third hit of his combo, which is an AoE. Uh, it just hits all the enemies around him and hits both him and his shield, so it just overall is more useful. Like I said, once you get there, you just start mashing buttons until eventually he leaves and then you repeat the process again and you get him to level 3 and then you just win. Also, be sure to use Team Blast basically as soon as you get them. You tend to get them in the open area. You, I wouldn't imagine that you get them just chasing him down, so it shouldn't be any issue just using them immediately. And you know, that's it.
bosses aren't exactly a Sonic Hero's strong suit. It is cooler looking than any other boss in the game so far, and the fact that I have more to talk about this than just spam attacks uh, places this a bit above the other ones, but it's still not good, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in D tier. Okay, I'm really glad they put special stages in a 3D Sonic game, but man, these are bad to control. Really, there's nothing more to say. If you can struggle through the incredibly unwieldy controls, these sections are easy. So there's not really any benefits to them at all, except for having special stages in 3D, which is cool. But I really want them to take another crack at this, and I feel like they'll be great. But these ones, the music tracks carry this, and the visuals carry this, and the concept carry this. It's a D tier. It's better and more entertaining than most of the bosses, if you're just going through them mindlessly. But aside from that, it doesn't really give any value. Okay, so that's my tier list. Most of the main levels are great, but the bosses are all boring and or incredibly easy. Honestly, this game would be improved if we just kicked out all the bosses entirely. Metal Sonic's alright. There are two phases to this fight. The first one, Metal Madness, is just spamming attacks on Metal Sonic's weak point with each team. The spot's color shows which formation he's immune to. Uh, team Rose hasn't changed, Team Chaotix changes between Yellow and Red, and Team Dark alternates between all three for some reason, despite Shadow not having any long range abilities. Only thing really worth mentioning about this part is that Metal Sonic can trap you with his weird crystal rockets. Also be sure to remember that you can just cancel out of the cannon with the attack button so you don't shoot yourself to your death. I did this on accident too. Couldn't figure out how to fit it into the video, but I figured it was worth showing. The second phase, Metal Overlord, is where the best Crush 40 song kicks in. You can debate this all you want in the comments, but you're fighting losing battle. This one is the best. Metal Overlord is actually pretty easy, big surprise. Uh, use Sonic to break through the crystals, use Knuckles to shoot fireballs at the ships that he throws, and use Tails for no reason. The only damage you can do is with a Team Blast, so work on getting the bar filled up as fast as possible. Do this a few times and congratulations, you've beaten Sonic Heroes. Also, Metal Sonic gets a C for cool guy. So yeah, that's my ranking for every level in Sonic Heroes. I do know that there's more to each team than the brief synopses I gave at the beginning, but I stand by the statement that they still aren't as fun as the basic Team Sonic run. I'll probably do more of these in the future for other games, Sonic or not. I'll have to figure out a way to rank games like Sonic Adventure 2 with over 30 levels plus bosses without talking forever, so I'll work out something. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you have any games that you'd like to see, then go ahead and let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you enjoyed the video. This is my first time doing something like this. Uh, give me some tips or whatever. All right, see ya. Bye!